So Hans, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you and Focal Point Coaching does? Sure. Uh, um, we are a international organization, Jonathan, and uh, Focal Point Coaching and Training is really committed to uh, being the pebble on the pond in terms of um, uh, making an impact in our communities that really ripple out into the world. And to, to be clear about that specifically is that uh, we believe that uh, small business leaders and small businesses are the backbone of any healthy economy. Uh, and uh, we're convinced that by uh, helping those entrepreneurs and business leaders uh, make better decisions, get better results, build better teams, then that impacts not only the business leader they're working with, but uh, the company in which they work, all the members of that uh, organization, uh, the suppliers and vendors that uh, uh, help contribute to that ecosystem, and uh, the communities in which they live, the families that are participating and, um, and the workers who are part of that organization, and that ripples out into the regions and, uh, and, and so forth and so on. So. Um, uh, we're here to make positive impact in the world through leadership and education and uh, uh, economical development of, a, of a small, medium-sized, and enterprise-level businesses. Great. So how has the current situation affected you so far? Um, great. Well, that's a good, that's a good question. Uh, I, I sort of uh, laugh at that because we've just finished our annual conference. We're, uh, we're a team of about 250 coaches worldwide. And the uh, annual conference for us was scheduled in New Orleans uh, just this past week. And uh, first and foremost, we're impacted by it. We didn't all show up to, uh, to connect as we usually do on an annual basis, uh, this time in New Orleans. And um, uh, so we missed that. So we were, uh, we just got off of a virtual conference. So there was that first impact for us is uh, that uh, needing to, to um, uh, adapt to the current situation, but still focused on our connection, still focused on providing support as a community for ourselves uh, and empowering each other to go out and make that impact in the world. So that's one of the first things I think as conference comes to mind, having just done that virtually. It's always interesting if you haven't done your annual three-day conference with your organization um, virtually yet, it's always uh, uh, an interesting challenge. So that was, that was one of them. Uh, we did it with great success and uh, it has its technical logical challenges and ups and downs, but it was really great. I would say the other key thing of how it's affecting our business is really accelerating this toward, this trending toward virtual engagement and I think that uh, um, uh, coaches within our ecosystem have a lot of different ways in which they connect with their client base uh, often it's across the desk one-on-one -on -one, face to face and uh, uh, I myself am much more virtual these days, uh, but this has really accelerated the trend toward that as a community. So it's really impacted uh, focal point in that way. Um, the other thing I would say is it's really increased the activity of coaches uh, by and large. Um, uh, we focus on really helping organizations and business leaders with, um, with time allocation and time management for productivity, with team development, with money, um, and ensuring that uh, the profitability is there and the targets are hit or exceeded and with strategy, whether that be uh, as to how to take the next, the business to the next level or how to exit. And so more than ever, really, um, our services are required by business leaders and organizations all over the world. So um, there's a lot of activity right now uh, around that, helping that. And so uh, as a result, I think we've also, by and large, adjusted our packaging of solution sets with an emphasis on helping business owners to really reinvent. So those are some of the, some of the ways that, um, that this current situation has affected me and, and the broader audience of Focal Point. But one thing I'll share with you that's interesting is, um, uh, fortunately, we're in a habit of systematically doing this with our clients. Uh, meaning you know, helping businesses reinvent. And we really lean on some um, tested principles right that, for example, the sigmoid curve is a, just kind of a mathematical concept that's really been used widely to model natural life cycles and many things from biological organisms to population growth to schools and companies and your marriage and your careers. And the curve is basically like a stretched out S uh, lying on its side. 
um, that can be thought of as having three sections or distinct phases um, that corresponds to a phase of growth. And those are kind of a learning phase, a growth phase, and a decline phase. And so what, I, what we often do with clients is, um, is to surf that sigmoid curve, is to really um, recognize that successful individuals and organizations are self-reflective and really constantly monitoring um, their own position on the sigmoid curve. And to truly be successful and go further, one's got to really jump off of that current curve in, an, in, a, in, an, uh, in a growth state while you have the resources and the motivation and the momentum to step back into a learning phase. And uh, so we're systematically doing that all the time with clients. There's no better time than now to act quick, jump off while there's momentum, while there is financial support, while there is good cash reserves and core capital, and uh, uh, to reinvent, enter that learning phase again. Um, uh, to reestablish a growth phase in a you know slightly tweaked model, so um, it's really great for us. We're we're systematically doing that. That sounds like it'd be very helpful for your clients. Um, so, in regards to managing staff during this crisis, um, I've had a couple friends have unique issues. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some business owners that are in certain industries they have staff that are around that minimum wage point and the staff would rather stay at home and do nothing and get $2,000 a month mm -hmm. than go to work. So businesses that are essential or can still provide services sometimes aren't able to because their staff don't want to work. Um, and then the ones who are still um, managing, whether it's working remotely or are essential services with staff that are still working, what advice do you have for managing staff in this situation in regards to, to both of those situations? Yeah, well, I think that's a super interesting question. And I think it's, uh, it's relevant, not just in the context of this crisis, but I think team and staff engagement is something that uh, entrepreneurs and business leaders struggle with all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think uh, there are a number of strategies that really help with that. Uh, the focus on team is critical. And uh, I guess the advice that I would offer to uh, entrepreneurs in this time is for themselves to really build, uh, build, on their, build their leadership capacity, right? To start with themselves and focus on um, what I like to call the four Ps. It's really getting anchored in your, in your personal operating system uh, so that you're really leading by example what, it likes to, what it's like to make sure that all areas of your life are really addressed. Um, and you're successful in more than just how you show up for work. Um, uh, that's the first and foremost, to be a role model in that pace, place. The next part of the four Ps of, in terms of building leadership capacity, I would say, is really the focus on the people. And that is, to, uh, as a business leader, um, to not think necessarily about blanket strategies for my staff, but to really think about how to take care of people on an individual basis. What does this individual need? What is their behavioral style? How do I speak their language in a way that um, engages them? Um, the next thing I would say in the four Ps is to really focus on uh, priorities. Make that really clear in the organization and uh, to uh, delegate effectively some of those priorities so that people really can uh, start to feel more of a sense of belonging and importance uh, to help elevate their level of engagement. If you're familiar with um, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, you could apply that really specifically to uh, staff and team engagement um, and that a business leader really needs to look at, uh, at, at the psychological safety of an individual, right? Help them feel anchored in the business that they're in partnership with this together, and then increase that sense of importance and belonging with them to help move toward uh, the highest level of engagement they can. Um, so I've addressed in the four Ps, um, your personal operating system, people, um, and the priorities. The thing that I'll wrap it all up in, in the fourth P is an individual leader having the presence to really come in uh, as a leader, to really listen to people, to be engaged themselves, uh, and to um, drop the things that they're demonstrating that are being reflected in their staff, to really be uh, attuned to that for themselves. Um, and so the first start of you know, really helping out, I think, in terms of 
uh, managing your staff through this crisis, the focus on their individual leadership themselves. Role model that. Check in on people, empower them to do that. The next thing is I would say a real focus on culture right now is critical. It's always critical. But where entrepreneurs tend to tend to spend a lot of their time is either in the tech technical role or the, or the managerial role and uh, really having a mindset and the eyes of uh, being entrepreneurial. Um, and uh, in that, there comes a responsibility to the staff. I would ask entrepreneurs, what percentage of their time are they actually spending toward staff development, toward leadership on a group and a one-on-one -on -one basis? Um, generally, it takes more time than leaders typically allocate. Uh, you know, some metrics I've heard for the most successful teams, um, those leaders of those teams are dedicating 20 and 30% of their entire time to that effort. Um, it often falls by the wayside for crisis management entrepreneurs. So during this time, I really fo encourage folks to focus on that, um, on that cultural piece uh, for them. Um, and then to be a transparent what's going on with the organization, um, help people feel included, um, help people feel like they can make a difference in the organization and its survival and or success. Yeah, I think really engaging people like that and that focus on culture is really big right now. I talked with another uh, local entrepreneur specifically about how they're focusing on maintaining company culture during this time. And uh, I think to agree with what you said there, that that's uh, a major, a major thing. And I think engaging and um, having your employees have a role in the company's success and uh, survival uh, is powerful as well. Yeah. Terrific. What advice do you have for businesses on developing strategy for coming out of the crisis? Obviously it's quite challenging because we don't know how much longer this is going to last, especially for businesses that are really shut down like uh, restaurants and bars and stuff like that. But uh, what do you think people should be doing in, doing now to plan for their comeback? Yeah, terrific. Well, I often think of strategy as, um, as, uh, as <clears throat> executed as if getting into an airplane. You know, you always know, you always know where you are. You generally know exactly where you're trying to go. Um, and then the whole art of flying an airplane is just a constant course correction, right? This is no different <laughs> uh, than, uh, than any other time, except maybe we're off course a little more than we anticipated, which might even require that we change our destination um, to accommodate that. Uh, so that's a bigger play. Um, to be specific, I guess, what I would offer to, um, to business leaders uh, is to really anchor the business in the core ideology of the business. Get solid alignment around and with your team around the values and core purpose of the business and use these as a guide as to what you should do or shouldn't do. And, um, you know, allowing people to make decisions based on those uh, can be really valuable for engagement as well to reflect back to the other, um, uh, to the other question you had. But uh, where we're going with a lot of my clients right now is really diving into reevaluating the very business model that they're built on. Um, and the key advice I would give is to really know what is required uh, for your business model to work. Get really clear on the key metrics of survivability of that business in its current state and systematize the reporting to weekly, if not even daily, to make sure that you're getting those numbers uh, and those metrics to know exactly where you are and where you're trending. And building a worst case scenario, um, a most probable case scenario and a best case scenario, know where you are, know where you're trending and making those plans accordingly based on uh, real time, as real time data as you can get um, is, would be really critical. Know exactly at what point do customers fall off that you need to make another hard decision. At what point uh, in terms of revenue increasing, can you bring somebody back on board? Um, so those best advice I'd give you specifically is to, um, is to get clear on those metrics uh, after reevaluating the business model uh, and to uh, map out each of those scenarios and know where you're trending toward each one of those so that you can make really fast decisions that are 
uh, founded in uh, what the business is realizing in real time. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that reporting is huge. And a lot of uh, small businesses, I, I imagine there's some large businesses that do it as well, but a lot of small businesses, um, mine included in the past, have been really bad for up-to-date reporting um, and bookkeeping and figuring out where your um, profit and losses and break-even mm -hmm. points are. Um, and uh, like to your point, that's more important now than ever, for sure. Um, the, 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 one, the one the one tip I'll give you Jonathan um, is um, is you know quite often that falls into a business leader's lap right it's mm -hmm. the thing they don't give up um, my suggestion is it's the first thing that you delegate is systematize it in a way that it doesn't involve you to make happen make it a basic expectation of somebody to hand you that information every single day yeah, I, I've done that. I've I've hired a bookkeeper and it's been very helpful and she gives me monthly reports um, and it's made a big difference. I just uh, need to make sure that I don't get uh, complacent and I make sure I always look at those numbers to make sure they're in the right place because obviously that's not up to up to her, right? Um, yeah, well, you know, you know, you know, when I say metrics, I'm talking about four to six key measures, not more, not less, not a spreadsheet. Uh, what are the most critical numbers that you have to track in your business right now uh, is what I would ask. And how do you get those in, um, in the most concise form without mm -hmm. being cluttered by lots of other stuff that requires interpretation? Um, mm -hmm. As a business leader, you making the decision as to what's, what are the most important metrics for me and then making sure you get that information as frequently as possible. Mm -hmm. So this leads really well into my next question. What do you what advice do you have for maintaining cash flow and cash flow management in times for entrepreneurs when they could see massive revenue drops um, and have to run really lean to make it through the next couple months yeah this is this is this is a great uh, you know a great case point actually and working with my clients one of the first things that we typically do is we look at the business model and we look at the numbers um, is the first thing we often do is build a core capital reserve and a core capital reserve is exactly the amount of money that it would take to run your business for a three to four month window uh, if everything were, if you were to lose all revenue. And this amount of reserve not only can be really useful in times like this, but it's also uh, the piece that we can lean on and tap into when we're looking to, to grow or to scale and make strategic decisions. So having a, you know, I would back up to, you know, a year ago <laughs> and I would set a core capital target of whatever it took my business uh, to whatever their burn rate was for two to three months. Um, and I would put that in reserves. Uh, but moving forward, what I would do is I would identify, you know, what's really important right now. Uh, for the business. Get clear on the elements that really support the delivery of your value proposition to your ideal customer base, period. Um, and I used a, a way to wealth formula developed by Brian Tracy. And um, in that we can evaluate uh, the, the formulas that are um, of any business to explore the difference between inputs versus outputs and to understand where the locus of control is. So for example, focusing on those three formulas, the first formula in any business is the customer formula, right? We all want more customers, but customers is an output. We can't control that. What we can control is we can control the number of leads that come in and we can control the conversion rates. So I encourage, uh, uh, you know, to take that formula, understand what your current leads scenario looks like, what is your current conversion rates? And what are the things that you can do to tweak the leads to increase them? And what can you do to tweak the conversion rates to increase those? If we move down to the next formula of any business, it's the revenue formula. Um, and we all want more money, but that's an output of a business. It's not within our control. What is within our control is the average uh, sales size of whatever it is that we're uh, delivering to the to customer. The other thing that's in our control is, uh, you know, the average number of purchases per period. Those two things equal revenue. So if we look at those two things, we can control those in ways that we can't control the revenue. Uh, and then the third formula that's critical is the, is the profit formula, right? Is we can control, uh, we can't control our gross profit or our net profit, 
but we can control is we can control our cost of goods sold and we can control our operating costs. And so those are the variables that we have. And so people understanding that um, is critical of what they can control and what is an output. And the other thing that I would say is if you break your business down like that, um, then you can start to apply what we call the 1% rule. You can make incremental changes to each one of those things that you can control that will compound over time. And so that's largely what I do with businesses in terms of helping them achieve greater success and, uh, and certainly more profitability is to start looking at those things. And rather than making sweeping changes, we make incremental changes that are going to compound over time. Things that are easy to do that they can do now with no money, but a little more brainstorming and, you know, shifts in activity that are going to um, achieve really real results uh, uh, that will just simply compound over time. And so, you know, one of the things that I'll offer your listeners, uh, uh, Jonathan, is um, I've got a worksheet on this, the Way to Wealth worksheet. I'd be happy to share with people um, where they can simply do it yourself and fill in the blanks and they can see the impact that, uh, you know, what a 1% what a change in lead generation or a 5% uh, change in conversion rate or a 1% change in average sale. When you put a 1% to each one of those controllable factors, you wind up with some very, very big increases in, uh, in revenue and profit and customers. Sorry, I just had a knock at the door here. Um, okay, so that kind of leads me into the, the last question then. What has been your biggest challenge in the last month with this situation? You know, I'm a business owner. Uh, I'm just like all the business owners that I work with. Um, and that uh, my biggest challenge has been, I would say it's twofold. Um, you know, on a personal level, it's me having to pivot a little bit, right? It's me increasing the terms um, of my retainer for my client base. It's me having to, you know, increase activity and maybe pivot toward training to more enterprise organizations because uh, small to medium sized businesses have contracted their, uh, their, their cash flows. Um, the second thing uh, that I would say uh, that's you know, similar to my own personal experience in my business as a business leader is holding space for my clients uh, and the coaches that I support uh, through this time. Uh, this is a, um, the business that I am in is very um, emotionally involved <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and holding that space uh, in this stressful time for as many clients as I serve uh, is exhausting. And so I think that's, my challenge is twofold. One is a business leader uh, and one is a coach. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of similarity. There's a lot of crossover. And um, I would say, you know, with regard to adjusting, the other thing that's really clear to me that I think most business owners will share is that um, you start to reevaluate re um, uh, your priorities and you reevaluate re where you're putting your time. And if you add on to that, uh, you know, that your kid's out of school and you're now homeschooling and running your business and being a husband, um, then, you know, it sort of blows your time management model. You've been sort of lazy about <laughs> up and you have to reinvent it. Um, and you have to make those decisions and you have to be real about, um, about what's going on uh, for you and your situation and for those that uh, are in your family and your loved ones and those that you care about because we want to support so many people it can just be really it can be thin at times mm -hmm. for sure so uh, where can people find out more about you and what you do and uh, that worksheet yeah, so the best place to, to contact me is um, my email address. We'll put it in the, uh, we could put it directly into the, um, in the recording, uh, if you like, Jonathan. It's uh, sure. H-T-R-U-P-P, H-T-R-U-P, at focalpointcoaching.com. And so that's one great place. You can find me on LinkedIn as, uh, as Von Trupp. And uh, you can... Um, if you email me that, uh, just send me a quick email. I'll be happy to pop over a Way to Wealth worksheet and uh, share with folks to go through this. And if you want to, uh, Jonathan, if we wanted to add to the Ambition Project a, uh, a quick kind of a, a group coaching or a, 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 a nugget, if you will, of business fundamentals, um, I'm happy to hop on and actually present that worksheet and walk through it with uh, you and your client base. Awesome. Yeah, we could, uh, we could definitely do that live sometime. That'd be great.
Okay. Terrific. Um, well, Jonathan, one thing I one thing I do want to um, uh, you know congratulate you on. Uh, by the way, I was just reading uh, from uh, the Best of Calgary Awards uh, the designation that uh, Symbol Syndication got for the best videographer in Calgary. Congratulations on that reward uh, award there, and uh, you know I love the highlights that they gave in that, and the customer reviews uh, were fantastic, incredible testimonials. Um, you do really great work, and it's been a pleasure to work with you. Uh, with uh, through some of my clients and, um, uh, and and get to know the quality of your work. It's really fantastic. I really appreciate that, Hans. Thank you so much. I uh, hope we get to work on uh, quite a few more projects in the future together. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, great. Um, what other uh, what other questions or comments do you have before we wrap this up? I think that's it for for questions from my end. But if you have any concluding remarks or anything else you'd like to mention, um, that would be great. Yeah, I guess, um, I guess in closing, I would just encourage entrepreneurs and business leaders out there to, um, uh, to take initiative. Uh, now is a great time to be really proactive. Uh, now's the time to, uh, to step up, get engaged, uh, be empowered uh, to, uh, to reinvent and to, to think about what your business model, the ideal business model for you looks like, the ideal scenario in terms of your personal time allocations and uh, your team and your strategy and what your exit might look like down the road. Evaluating all of that in, uh, in some way and remapping uh, building the ideal world for you, I think would be um, the suggestion I would give to entrepreneurs and business leaders today. Um, uh, our local economies count on it. Our regional account economies count on it. Um, and, uh, you know, the impact that your businesses make in the world for supporting the backbone of our economy is critical. So thank you out there for doing what you do as uh, business leaders and entrepreneurs. Thank you for your time, Hans. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome, Jonathan. Have a great uh, rest of your afternoon. You too.